Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get it. Get it. Ah. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. My name is Quincy Davis, and in this lesson, it's going to be a reaction to the great, and I mean that, the great Joe Morello, amazing drummer who passed away about 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago. Um, but in this clip, we're going to be checking out his playing with, of course, the amazing Dave Brubeck and his quartet, Paul Desmond on the saxophone and Eugene Wright on the bass. And they're going to be playing, of course, the famous Take 5, which is not written by Dave Rubeck. I make a lot of mistakes on here. I'll admit it. Um, but I think I'm pretty, I, I know I'm right about this. It was written by Paul Desmond. I actually thought it was written by Dave Rubeck for a long time. So uh, anyway, we're going to be checking out this clip. Uh, I make it a point not to jump to the drum solo because it's important to understand the context that the drum solo happens within. So um, it's not a long clip, but it's an amazing clip because this is the Dave Brubeck Quartet after maybe two or three years after the album Time's Out um, happened in 59. So it's interesting to hear how this, this composition and how they play it evolved over time. So that's why I really like this clip. Um, before I forget, I just want to remind you that I have a bass play along track that cats have been checking out. So as you can hear, I'm using a bass play along track that I've created for you and me, for all drummers who want to work on their time and their feel. And it's 20% off until the end of this month. So check it out. The link will be down below. All right. It is time to check out this clip of Joe Morello. And you know what I'm about to do. I'm about to go get my green tea, as I always do. You should do the same. If not green tea, get your wine, get your beer, get your popcorn, get a sandwich. I don't care. Get a Snickers bar, whatever you got to do to get comfortable, because this clip is incredible. These cats are not playing. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Peter Evans, are you ready? Are you guys really ready? Steve Barnes, are you ready? Well, then let's go! <laughs> I got to stop it. I got to stop it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> the downbeat, the way Joe plays the downbeat, that's something to learn from just that alone. The, the feeling of the downbeat and how strong and stern it is and the way the downbeat sets up the, the groove, the way it feels. Um, it just sounds like no nonsense. We're in. Boom, we're, I'm ready to go. You guys better be ready to go, too. That's kind of the feeling. That's something to learn from. By the way, this is a reaction video. Some of you guys don't know what that is, and I get nasty comments saying, hey, why are you talking the whole time? Why are you talking over the music? That's what a reaction video is. So keep that in mind. If you want to watch it without talking and commentary, don't watch a reaction video. All right, but I will try to stay out of the way a little bit more in this one compared to the last one. Cheers. Here we go. We're going to do that downbeat again, though, because it's so bad. Here we go. Oh, that feels good. I love it. I love it. It's a, it's a hip riff. Everyone knows it, and it's still hip sounding. This version is a lot faster than the original on the album. By the way, this is the same setup as the Oscar Peterson trio, except with uh, saxophone, so that's interesting. See, I love how the bass player and the drummer can communicate because um, they're right next to each other. I love that. Yes. Whew. I mean, 
his sound, the alto sound, Paul Desmond's sound is just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful sound. So they're just kind of, there's no form, right? They're just kind of riffing over the one chord, the Dorian chord. chord. I love how alert Joe Morello just seems. He seems super aware of everything that's happening in the band. Oh, that's pretty. That's a quote, that's a classical quote. I, I don't know the tune, I can't remember the melody or which uh, composer, but that's a quote. It's beautiful. Um, opening up. By the way, on the, uh, on the album, there's no piano solo. And th again, this is a few years later. So maybe he just kind of felt more comfortable um, years later taking a solo, or maybe, I don't know. But it's really exploring playing in five. Really opening up. Beautiful. just a beautiful palette of sound. I love it. You see that quarter note? Quarter note is always king. Uh-oh. Uh. Now he's kind of engaging with the more percussive approach to playing piano. Woo! Uh. I want to back it up because I want to see what Joe does differently, if he does anything differently when he goes into more of that percussive uh, approach to playing the piano. I want to see if Joe does anything different. So let's see if he changes it up. Right here. Not really, right? So he doesn't really change, so that, that's something to learn from. You don't always have to change with the rest of the band. You can just keep the groove and just get even deeper into the groove, creating more intensity. Hear that bass drum? trip. He took us on a trip. It was beautiful. All right, let's see what Joe has. Okay, so I'm going to stop it right there for a second. Notice how he's playing match grip. I get a lot of questions. Do I have to play traditional if I play if I play uh, jazz? Um, I get a lot of questions of what grip you should use. You should use the grip that you feel most comfortable with. That's the first thing. Keeping, keeping in mind that traditional is traditionally, no pun intended, a jazz grip. Um, and I encourage you, especially if you're new to jazz, especially if you're coming from uh, styles of music where you're playing match grip and you're playing strong, you're playing backbeats, um, this will force you to, one, not play as loud, also not play as busy. So... I encourage you to learn traditional grip. I have a video, a lesson on that. Um, there's a lot of lessons you can check out. But, and early on in earlier clips, you'll see Joe Morello sticking to, right, 
traditional grip. But in this clip, again, this is a couple years, two or I think this is 1962 uh, or 63. And here he's exploring playing with match grip, right? He has t great technique, whichever grip he uses. But um, you can really hear him opening up. Also on this solo, he's not playing over a vamp. So um, that kind of opens up things for him as well. So let's see, uh, let's see where he goes with it. Here we go. Uh, yes. Very, very uh, motific. Yes. Ah. Got those Coke bottle, Coke bottle glasses on. <laughs> he had bad eyesight. That was something I learned. Ah. I told you he still has that technique. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get it. Get it. Ah. His hands were ridiculous. Woo. Oh, man. Wow. Something I want to point out is he's very motific, right? It's, I mean, you know, he has hands for days, ridiculous hands. But I also want to point out that he's very motific. He'll play an idea, and often he'll play that idea again. He might even play it again. He might even play it again, right? Um, and if he plays it, he's, he develops. His All of his solos are very motific, and he really takes his time developing ideas. Um, so that's something to work on. Um, a couple things. So one thing is work on soloing with your feet ostinato going like this. One, two, three, four, five. You know, you know, soloing like that, um, it's it's tricky, but it's a good way to kind of work on your independence. Another thing, just work on your basic five groove, right? So you can just take something uh, that sa uh, that same tempo. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, a uh, three, four in the ride. One, two, a uh, three, four. Five. One, two. Try singing the bass line as you're playing. Dun, 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 right? So maybe start with something fairly simple like that. And then that can kind of open up to wherever you feel comfortable. So you can kind of take the left hand, right? Again, trying to keep the bass drum and the hi-hat ostinato going um, will kind of help you keep your wherewithal. Then, obviously, there's more places and you can start to open up a lot more and get away from that con consistent one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So what if you get away from that? Start right there. One, two. Mm. Mm. One, two, three. Ooh. Right? 
so it can really open up. But I would definitely recommend starting with a basic foot ostinato um, that you can get comfortable with and then opening it up from there. Okay, so let's finish out this clip. Here we go. This is, again, this is a lot faster than the album. Woo! Yeah. And this might be a, a, a little bit faster than they started, which is okay. Just making an observation. Back. Let's check it. Uh, not really. No, it's about to say. I stand corrected. <laughs> I stand corrected. All right. So that is today's reaction video on the great, and I really mean that, the great Joe Morello, um, master drummer, master technician, but also a master melodic, very melodic player. Right, I think that often gets overlooked by his his technique, but very melodic, often developing motifs. That's a, a very big feature of his playing. In this case, with the the great quartet, the famous quartet, who he's with, he was with for over ten years. Um, so Dave Rubeck, Paul Desmond, Eugene Wright. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this clip, and work on that five. Okay, work on playing in five. And check out other recordings of playing of drummers playing in five. That's how you kind of start to learn more vo vocabulary. And uh, play along with this track from Time Out. It's, it, it's a great track to play along to. So, all right. Until the next time, you know what to do, right? You know what to do. Practice hard. Practice hard. But practice smart. Take care. Bye-bye.